How London Breed Could Bypass Progressives' Ballot Bound San Francisco leaders are sharply divided over a proposal to require drug screening and treatment for welfare recipients, but Mayor London Breed isn't ruling out the option of taking the idea directly to voters. Time equals 400 Ms. Greater than Breed, who faces a tough re-election campaign next year, unveiled her plan this week to mandate that all applicants undergo screening and accept treatment, if needed, in order to be eligible for county-funded cash assistance. Her proposal would require the support of the progressive-leaning Board of Supervisors. Time equals 400 Ms. Greater than that is, unless Breed decides to go around the board and use her mayoral authority to pursue it through a 2024 ballot initiative. It's perhaps telling that Breed floated her plan three weeks before the October 17 deadline to submit a measure for the March ballot. Jeff Creedon, Breed's spokesperson, declined to comment on the prospect. He told Playbook, however, that while many on the board have chosen outright opposition, the mood among voters could be different. The residents of San Francisco clearly want change, they clearly want action, he said. Some progressive critics have balked at Breed's proposal, as well as the notion that San Francisco voters might support it. Board of Supervisors President Aaron Peskin, a progressive and potential rival in the mayoral race, said it feels like a political gimmick. He said Breed has not provided a written proposal, let alone explained how she would pay for it or provide enough treatment beds, if it's some kind of Ronald. Reagan or Donald Trump nonsense, I imagine that the Board of Supervisors will say no, Peskin said, and if the mayor wants to take it to the ballot, I imagine the voters of San Francisco will also say no, Breed's proposal was a shocking move for the mayor of San Francisco, perhaps the most liberal big city in America. She announced it on the same morning that Daniel Lurie, a Democrat and heir to the Levi Strauss fortune, announced he will challenge her in next year's election. Several progressive members of the board assailed Breed's plan at a meeting this week, as the San Francisco Standard reported. Hillary Ronan called it disturbing, and Connie Chan pointedly asked, Am I living in Texas, or am I living in San Francisco? But several of Breed's allies on the board have vouched for the plan, or hinted a ballot fight is likely. Supervisor Raphael Mandelman said, it would probably be pretty popular as a ballot measure if it goes there. About 5,200. People are on San Francisco's cash assistance program for indigent single adults. Roughly 20% of them have disclosed they have a substance abuse problem. Recipients with stable housing can receive a maximum of $687 per month. Homeless participants receive a maximum monthly stipend of $105 and a shelter bed under the Care Not Cash ballot initiative that passed in 2002, which was spearheaded by then-supervisor Gavin Newsom. Trent Rohrer, executive director of the city's Human Services Agency, said the mayor's plan has been misconstrued by critics who are drawing comparisons to Republican welfare proposals of the 1990s. Rohrer said not all welfare recipients will be drug tested, and that only those who self-disclose an addiction or exhibit signs of it during an initial screening would be evaluated further. He said they would only need to accept treatment to be eligible for cash assistance, adding, they could still be actively using drugs, and many in treatment programs do. With help from Rachel. Bluth Happy Thursday Afternoon Welcome to California Playbook PM, a Politico newsletter that serves as an afternoon temperature check of California politics and a look at what our policy reporters are watching. Got tips or suggestions? Shoot an email to email protected or send a shout on Twitter. DMs are open. Time equals 400 ms. Greater than pain at the pump. Gas prices in California are once again soaring, hitting a statewide average of $6.03 on Thursday. That hasn't gone unnoticed by Newsom, who earlier this year championed a plan to allow state energy regulators to fine oil refineries for excessive profits. Newsom, in a letter this week, urged the California Energy Commission to begin the regulatory process to cap gasoline profits. Oil companies are ripping you off, and we're going to get to the bottom of it, the governor said. Newsom also urged the State Air Resources Board to allow refineries to begin selling cheaper, winter blend gasoline ahead of schedule. Republicans, meanwhile, are again urging Newsom and Democrats to ease prices by suspending the state's gas tax. Deal cooked, fast food workers will get a raise and voters will be spared from an epic ballot fight under a law Newsom signed today after brokering a deal between labor and restaurant chains. It was a full-circle moment for the governor. A little more than a year after signing a more expansive franchise restaurant labor law, 
spurring an industry referendum drive and an escalating cat and mouse game in Sacramento. Newsom was in Los Angeles to seal a compromise that allowed the two sides to lay down their arms. CO can tout wages rising to $20 an hour. Big business won a ban on local wage ordinances, a reprieve from enhanced legal liability, and a slimmed-down workplace regulator that can't dictate scheduling and leave policies. In exchange, the restaurants are pulling their referendum from the 2024 ballot, saving both sides tens of millions of dollars, it didn't come easy. Newsom said the pact was the product of, 100-plus hours, of negotiations. Since August, Jeremy B. White Housing Settlement, a judge accepted a settlement today in a protracted Los Angeles court fight over homelessness, accepting the county's commitment to provide additional housing and mental health support to people on the streets, U.S. District Judge David O. Carter's approval came after he rejected two previous settlement country proposals to settle the suit filed in 2020 by the L.A. Alliance for Human Rights. The group accused the city and county of failing to provide shelter while allowing tents to spread across public spaces. As part of the settlement, the county committed to offering 3,500 additional beds for people in need of treatment for mental illness and substance abuse. The city had already agreed to providing 13,000 beds. Mayor Karen Bass, who has made alleviating homelessness her central focus, said in a statement that she hoped the pact would provide critical services and help the city and county stop pointing fingers and come together. Jeremy B. White Tesla Troubles Tesla has been accused of subjecting black workers at its Fremont assembly plant to harassment, discrimination and retaliation in a suit filed today by the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission after it was unable to reach a settlement with the company led by Elon Musk. V. Wall Street Journal Bad News An audit has provided some context to recent layoffs at CapRadio. The audit by the California State University System revealed that management at Sacramento's NPR affiliate mishandled money, took out loans without the knowledge of the board and missed rent payments. The Sacramento B. Time equals 400 ms. greater than pod save US. A California startup is pitching pods in a shared living space as a solution to the scarcity of low-cost housing. Brownstone Shared Housing offers very cozy, spaces large enough to fit a single twin bed, and nothing else, for $500 to $900 per month in San Francisco, Palo Alto and Bakersfield. You have to share a bathroom, though. Los. Angeles Times.